Hey everybody, happy Wednesday from the Podcast Daily. It's time for a stock watch, and what do you do for a stock watch when you don't play a game? You make up another version. And so we're gonna do a second half prediction. Okay. Some stocks to watch. Not bold predictions though, because we already no, did no, these second are, half these bold are, predictions last well, week. Well, maybe I shouldn't have used the word. I, a, a projection, stock projection, you know, get your call sheets out. This is the one you wanna invest in now, buy low. Those are all stock sell words. Sell high. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All of that stuff. That's what we're going to do. That's Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham, and I am Austin Ward. And so we've made the rules. We've set them up. You have some investment dollars available to you, Berm. Where are you putting them? I'm putting them in G. Scott. G. Scott. Okay. Uh, I think that as the season has gone along, we've seen a player starting to finally buy into the entirety of the program. It's starting to yield some positive results on the field. And he is a different type of receiver than Kate Stover is and Mitch Rossi is. Um, you know, I think the other interesting thing, and I'm going to stick at tight end, is I wonder if we're going to get to see Joe Royer this year or not. Because, again, we talked about this a week ago, but Joe Royer was the clear-cut number one tight end in this building until June. Uh, and now you have to wonder, after some personal stuff and where he's at, is he going to be able to work himself into the rotation if he can? Maybe I'm saying Joe Royer's name here, but I'm going to say G. Scott instead because it's just another weapon. Who? Why not just have more offensive weapons? Yeah, I think it'll be tough for Joe. I mean, uh, hearts go out to uh, the Royer family for what they've gone through, and just shift putting that aside, that's difficult enough. The on-field, you know, health injuries with the groin and everything else, like it's tough for what he's going through, and you you miss time, you miss practice uh, for for various reasons. That's hard to make up. We've talked about that before on Snap Judgments and some other shows, like just how much Ohio State values the practice reps, how meaningful and significant they've been for this team. And Joe Royer's missed a lot of them, but yeah. G. Scott has has reaped some of the benefit of that, as well as Cade and, and Mitch Rossi. But that may make it hard, but I think that goes back to your original point. Like G. Scott does seem to be trending in the upward direction. Yeah. Dwan Jones, who you asked about on uh, Tuesday, got what I thought was a pretty insightful answer from Kevin Wilson about Dwan's development. Yeah. Um, he is looking more and more like a guy who I think is going to put himself in the conversation to be maybe first round is still a little premature, but like a top 50 ish, I think kind of NFL draft prospect. And I wasn't totally sold on the idea that he was going to get there. Um, especially if his projections are more like mid round last year, but he's played really well to this point. Um, I think the physical changes that he dedicated himself to were showing up on the field. Um, he and Paris Johnson both, I think, are going to have stiffer challenges ahead in terms of individual pass rushers that Ohio State's going to face. Um, they've, they've not really seen much of, of a premier pass rusher to this point. Like Isaiah Foskey is probably the best. They handled him okay, um, but they're going to continue to be challenged. But I, but I think DeWan is more up to that this year than he would have been last year. So, um, yeah, I'd buy a little bit of stock in him because I think it's going to keep rising. I would put a, a little amount expecting a big payoff potentially or hoping for one on Sonny Styles, And mm -hmm. I think that that may be a little too aggressive in the market because you know- But you can't invest more than you can afford to lose. Well, well you certainly can. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, do what, you can do whatever you want. But you should That's good advice, but you actually can't ignore <laughs> it if you right choose. Now. Yeah, yeah, it didn't, didn't quite resonate. I think, so we just got a glimpse of this against Wisconsin, right? I mean, I know that there were other injuries, there were other factors involved, especially at safety. But when Ohio State, when Jim Knowles started saying, well, this team wants to run and we want to put another body out there, who did he put out? Sonny Styles. Mm -hmm. And I think, that, I think he's going to grow into a linebacker and I think maybe everyone is realizing that is happening in real time. And against some of these teams that are going to try and run where you're also wanting to maintain uh, schematic flexibility for Jim Knowles. Sonny Styles can provide that. Now, I know that there are other guys that can do that, other veterans. That could be something that Josh Proctor does, for example, or Lathan Ransom or Court Williams or a healthy Cameron Martinez. Um, but I think when you're talking about putting somebody else in the box who can go knock somebody back onto their backside, Sonny Styles might, I think he's surpassed what I thought he could already do for his freshman year. And I think there may be an opportunity for more down the stretch. So that's, I, th I think it's one to watch. Do you think that Jim Knowles is aware of the running meme we have on safety-driven defense? Because he mentioned it on Tuesday in, in the I press I think conference. he's doing it on purpose. And he said it very specifically, and I felt like it was pointed. 
He said uh, it in the first 15 seconds. Yeah, when he said it. And he said, what he said was interesting to me, though. He said, we have more we can do with the safeties in this defense. And I'm trying to figure out what else they can do because there are six of them on the field, it seems, at a time <laughs> all season long. But the player that I'm talking about now moving up even more than he already has is Lathan Ransom, the number one ranked safety in the country, according to Pro Football Focus. And I know those are hit and miss at times, but what you see with your eyes matches up to that rating. He's been sensational. I think he's going to put himself in a position where you can't take him off the field, a la Ronnie Hickman. And uh, I just think that stock keeps going up and up. And I think, but remarkably, it probably leads to this being the last six games in the regular season at, o at Ohio State. For mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think the injury probably impacts that. Probably. I mean, yeah, I, I think, I think you know, you, you realize how fickle uh, things mm -hmm. can go. His good friend and high school teammate, Bijan Robinson, will probably be going to the NFL, obviously, after this year. And I, I think he's proving that he can play at that level faster than he's ever been, more physical than he's ever been. Safeties are not obviously early round, you know, early entrant guys all a lot, but second or third round money in the NFL is still pretty good. Will he have a mustard named after him, like his high school teammate Bijan Robinson? Mm, I don't know. I mean, Bijan and Dijon make really yeah, but a, you can like nice lather bit. on the mustard, lather and lathen. I think you can do something with that. Mm. I don't think so, Tim. He should probably try and carve out a different lane in the condiment. Yeah. I'm not sure. Stock down on mustard. <laughs> <laughs> well, mustard is up, but like it's already taken. I, I'm, how many more do you need out Invest there? in big mustard, folks. Um, <laughs> Ransom's relish. I mean, maybe. Oh, there you go. Uh, something along those lines. Yeah. You know, I don't know how many people would pay ransom for relish. <laughs> I guess like that's weird to me. I wouldn't personally pay a ransom for a relish. I would just let the relish go. Uh huh. Uh, but. <laughs> You know, we can, we'll, we'll workshop that uh, as Let's, we go. We don't have to, actually. <laughs> that's that's another piece of advice that you can ignore. Sure. Let's talk more about condiments. Um, I, Steel Chambers has played well to this point, so I don't I don't say this is an implication that I, that I think he's not playing well enough, but it has seemed like over the last couple of games that he's really gotten comfortable, and I think much of that is just his tackling ability and improving and not hitting guys up so high and falling off the tackles, what we were critical of earlier in the year. Um, and I think sometimes we forget just how little time he's actually spent playing this position. So it makes sense to me that he's maybe just now getting his feet under him. And even, even that feels like short slung a little bit because he has played well. But there's another level for him with his athleticism. Um, they're going to play better offenses, not this week, but, but down the road, yeah. um, where they're going to need him to, to be a short tackler and kill plays on the perimeter. And he's done a really good job of that the last two weeks. So I, th I think that's a guy who's going to keep improving week to week, too. I know Berm is going to criticize this selection, but I promise that it comes from a well thought out place. He never criticize anything. That's not true. You do every Friday on Bold Predictions. Mm -hmm. That's a very different show than this. Well, the answer this is, is about to be the same of one that I used frequently show. there. Oh boy. The stock right now from Cameron Brown, two weeks ago was not good at Michigan State. Now I think there are a lot of reasons and I've outlined those in other places and other shows throughout the week. You don't practice, you don't generally play well. Uh, you can also, struggle through things when you've waited your whole career to be healthy and then you have another setback and you're not allowed to practice. You're not allowed to play for two games. Uh, he looked rusty. He committed some penalties, uh, got a little bit out of phase on one or two plays that I know that he would like to have back. So if that stock took a dip against Michigan State, I think getting an opportunity to get back at practice, to you know see that and understand that didn't meet the standard and embrace the challenge because he's playing to potentially be uh, first, second, third round draft pick, whatever, a top of the top of the draft cornerback when he's been healthy. I think that he's been at that level. I think he can get back to it. So now's not the time to dump any Cam Brown stock. I think that you should load up on it moving forward. I thought you owned all of it already. Uh, well, I mean, I'm... Yeah, are you willing to sell some yeah, to other can people? Can I buy some? I, I'm not allowed to acknowledge how much stock I may or may not have invested in Cameron Brown. But I, if there's any available... Yeah, hypothetically. And you find it, let me know. Because I'm buying it. Uh, is it too obvious to say C.J. Stroud? Um, I, it's oh, we, it's, we're mailing it in it's, on it's Stock weird. Watch. It's weird because I you think... You can buy Amazon stock. I think, <laughs> I think people people are out there wondering, like, you know, we saw the Hendon Hooker game against Alabama and the national media buzz is all going to be about him now until he has a bad game and then it'll fall off. C.J. Stroud just keeps doing his thing, doing his thing. For Ohio State to win a national championship, for Ohio State to be what everyone thinks this team can be it's going to come down to cj stroud being better than he's been and he's been pretty darn good but 
I'm not going to take CJ Stroud. We're oh, talking Travion wow, Henderson. What an okie doke. Travion wow. Henderson is the guy who will can't afford it. Separate. <laughs> uh, don't don't invest more than you can afford. Yeah, invest in Travion Henderson because he is as talented as any running back in the country. Looks like he's going to be healthy enough to 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 go full speed, and that's really what you have to have out of him. And I think that he hears it. I know nobody wants to talk about what you read on the internet or what you hear from, you know, the, the peanut gallery out there, but like he's a proud kid and, and he knows the expectation. And I, I think we're going to see him continue to play even harder than he has. And he's run harder this year than he certainly did at any point last year. And I think it's going to even get more and more emphatic for him. And I think that breakout game for Trayvon Henderson is coming. I think so too, actually. That's a good pick. Uh, I'm torn between two. Well, one is very. Can I just like can I get some Jackson Smith and Jigba stock? You like, can take sure. it. Yeah. <laughs> is, he going, is he going to play? Because if he's going to play, here. <laughs> is the best play, is the best receiver in the country going to be back on the field at some point? Because if so, I'd like to buy some of that stuff. Yeah, I think that'd be a good time for <laughs> it. If it's trading at a low price, um, <laughs> Ro- Ronnie Hickman, I think for a lot of the reasons, maybe Burn picked Lathan Ransom, but I don't think people quite appreciate how good Ronnie is because he's not a hundred tackle guy like he was last year. That's a good thing. Um, because when your safety has 100 tackles, it means your defense isn't very good. That's right. But uh, I think there are going to be moments down the road with teams that are more equipped to throw the ball down the field against Ohio State, um, or at least will attempt to in a more meaningful way than they've seen to this point. Um, and we're going to get to see a little bit of that center field ability that I think Ronnie was hoping to show this year. Um, and I think he'll be pretty good at it when, when he does uh, get that opportunity. I. I think this stock should already be higher. Uh, and if you're paying close attention, maybe you already have a bunch of it with JT Tui Molowal. And if you come in as a five star and the number one player in the country, uh, it's hard to really be undervalued. But I think he probably is based on I, I could not believe it when I went back through I went back through the box score for Michigan State and he was not credited with a single tackle, a single hurry. He got tackled. Uh, yeah, he got tackled <laughs> once pretty blatantly, but he he did not exist in the box score of that game. And if you watched it, you'd say, well, that that doesn't make sense. He's out there clearly making an impact for Ohio State. He has seven tackles in six games, and that's, three of them are for a loss, so that's impactful. But it just doesn't match up with how good he's actually been. That's going to change. Eventually, at some point, he's they're going to call a holding, I, I assume. I might, that might also be a wrong assumption. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll find out. But the guy is playing at a very high level and can still get much better. Uh, he, he's the one I think that makes everything go. He and Mike Hall, you know, I guess we could flip a coin or debate that if we wanted to. But yeah, those two should be on the field together. Yeah, I think the they time. need to play they every go. single snap until they can't breathe. That's <laughs> been my that's been my take all year, and yeah. I'm I'm gonna stick with it. And if that happens, that's that baby's going through the roof. Through the roof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are more. we doing one more? I no, mean, normally we do this things in nice, convenient. Yeah, it's three. Threes. Yeah, I don't think you need to do more. I, I got and you. I got four. In. And you actually uh, snuck four in. Cause yeah. You, I, I mean, I, I think CJ Stroud's going to have a great second half of the season. Yeah. But I just feel like obviously everyone already knows who he is and what he does, and the expectations are are silly. And I think he's going to surpass him. I really, I really do. Okay. I think we did a good job spinning the. But what off about day. you? You got another one. I also think CJ Stroud is good. Austin, do you agree? <laughs> I think he's good. And I think this is, settled, what, this is what I told you guys. Like every week, there's going to be someone that plays a huge game and they'll be like, oh, well, he's a shiny new toy. He's, he, he should be number one in the Heisman Straw Bowl and the head of CJ Straw. Can't pay attention. I mean, on the second half bold predictions, I did say that Hendon Hooker was going to win the Heisman. I mean, he deserves to be in the conversation. I'm not he played saying, a hell yeah. of a game against Alabama. Definitely. Yeah. I'm not saying he should. I just don't. Yeah, I I saw it on the board too at, at Ohio State that rivals uh, that people are like, oh, of course he's like, it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean anything. But like the kid, the kid played really well. He deserves to be there. Yeah, like, I mean, he, shine. he he definitely belongs in the conversation. I just I hope that people don't get I guess so I enamored. Say, Man, he's not a kid. Yeah, I guess I hope he's, people don't get so he's enamored. He's a vet by the fact that he had a good game against Alabama and has played. You know fairly well this season his numbers pale in comparison yeah. to what cj stroud is doing what? and cj stroud is playing three quarters a game uh it's not really comparable and this part is true for both of them they're gonna have to still win yeah. six more games in a conference championship realistically to be the quarterback who claims the heisman trophy because it seems pretty clear that that's what's going to happen this year as back to normal uh, for most years there but this this is not a surprising thing like in this same straw poll, am I wrong, Bill? Mayan Williams got a first place vote two weeks ago, so he certainly did. Some of this is is, and I get it. Are you suggesting that people no, overreact? No, 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 I, I'm not. To what's I'm happening not it's two days earlier. I just I think that 
I think it's meant to be an update and a reward for people who just played well that week. And Hendon Hooker did. And so yeah, he, won, didn't he won last Saturday's Heisman for sure. Yeah, he was the... Yeah, they should CJ's start... CJ's still the betting favorite, isn't he? Yeah. He is. Yeah. He's yeah. one to one. The they Heisman sh- should do a weekly... They should give um, Heisman Trophy keychains out oh, yeah. every like game. That. Or like a pull yeah. tab. And like if you win the Heisman Trophy so of the week times. award, you get like... You get, and you get Heisman. three <laughs> Heisman trophies. You get like to invited to New York. <laughs> like that'd be cool. Well, listen, America, that's we, our new idea for the Heisman so Trophy. we got so many ideas. We're, we're here to help with uh, investing tip tips that you can't actually use and uh, Heisman Trophy advice that the Heisman Trophy Trust won't actually listen to in any way. Um, but we're going to keep talking anyway on the podcast every single day. This has been The Daily for Wednesday. We're going to have another one tomorrow. We're also going to have some snap judgments after practice. A woody Wednesday coming your way. That's Bill Berm. I'm Austin. We'll see you then.